For a while I've wanted to explore 3D graphics in Python, so we're going to begin with ray casting and naturally make a backrooms game. We're going to actually need to create a maze. That's what we're going to navigate when we raycast and render a 2D plot into a 3D visual. We're going to make use of this algorithm, which we'll walk through now. This current object is a cell class, and it has a visited status, which is either true or false. It also has a set of neighbors, which in the case of this cell one, would have a neighbor of two, a neighbor of five. And it will also have a remove shared wall function which does exactly what you think it would do. If we were removing the shared wall between one and two, it would be this wall that gets removed. So let's see what will happen with our stack, our path, and the grid that will eventually give us the maze itself. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put our grid index zero object on the stack. Now in this case, we're actually going to start at five, and that's just because I want to show you something specific. Normally you would start at the cell labeled one. We're going to pop five off the stack, and actually we're going to create that now to our current cell. We'll set its visited to true, because we're visiting it, and then we're going to move on to look at its neighbors. Does it have any neighbors? And it does, it has one, six, and nine. And of those neighbors, we're going to randomly select one. In this case, we randomly selected six, and it was added to the stack because that's where we're going to go next. Then we remove the shared wall and rather than actually removing the wall I just made bold the walls that have stayed. That helps us sort of outline the maze as we're constructing it. And then we append 5 to our path because it's part of the path that we visited. Then what do we do? Well we're back to the beginning. 5 is part of our visited path and 6, well we pop it from the stack and we set it to our current. And then we look for neighbours, we select one, in this case 2, add that to the stack, remove any walls and add 6 to our path. And now we pop one off the stack and we set it to our current. Now it's been visited, but we're going to look for neighbors and it's going to have no viable neighbors. So we go down to this little else statement and we say that if path, so we've got something in our path, we're going to pop the last thing that was on it and we'll pop it onto the stack so that when we next come round, two will become our current again. And when we look for viable neighbors, well, we found one, but it can't be going back to one. So it has to go to three. So three is our selected, it appears on the stack, we remove the wall that's shared between two and three, and then we put two back on the path. And that means when we start the next cycle, we're starting from three and we've broken out of that little loop. So this is how our maze building algorithm works. Let's have a look at it in practice. You may also be interested to know what happens if we don't select the next cell randomly and we always just accept the first one. Well, this is what happens. Okay, and now we're going to make a maze that I can actually use. So having created the maze, I actually need to be able to export all the coordinate files for the walls. Now you could do this through JSON, but I just ended up dumping it to the terminal. I know it's not pretty, but it works. You can stick it into a file and then call it when you want to build the maze. Now we just need to look at the rays that we're going to be casting. So when we come to creating our ray, we're actually going to use two classes, a class for a wall and a class for a ray, and the ray interacts with the wall by cutting itself short at that point. Now the wall is really simple, it's just got two points, A and B, and they define the start of the wall and the end of the wall. The ray, however, has quite a bit going on. We've got a position, that's where it's starting from, and a direction. And we've also got an intersection, which we'll set as none, and that's where it meets a wall. And if it doesn't meet a wall, it just has an intersection of none. In the update method, we just update the direction, and that can happen, as you can see below, it's super simple, and we update the intersection, which is not not so trivial. 
Now I'm not going to go through all the maths here because that would be a video in and of itself but what you can see is right at the beginning we're basically just getting our x1 y1 or our Cartesian coordinates for the two ends of the wall and the two parts of the ray and we're constructing this divisor from them which we're going to use a little bit later to calculate t and u. Now if this divisor is equal to zero then our wall and our ray are parallel so there can be no intersection there's no point carrying out any more calculation so we can set our self intersection to none and just return from this function now if our t value is greater than equal to zero or is less than one and our u value is greater than zero then we have an intersection and we can find it out using these two calculations showing the x point and the y point then we can set our self intersection value to that and we know where the ray should end if these aren't true then our self intersection will just stay equal to none now let's just see what this looks like in a python implementation now you can see here where I've got the ray actually changing its direction based on the mouse. And when we go across the wall, you can see where it intersects because the wall lights up where the line crosses it. This is just a pretty version of a very simple implementation of a ray and a wall. A really nice one was done by the coding train. But we actually want to be able to have multiple rays present from a single particle. We can just direct them out of a single point like this. Now this looks really pretty and I love the kind of shading that we get from it. However, I don't just want to use random boundaries like these walls that have just been randomly spawned in. I want to be able to use our maze. So here it is in the maze and you can see it's doing a really nice job. The intersection calculation is working really well and the rays are stopping where they need to. But what you can't hear at the minute is that my computer is going manic because it's having to process so much information. So how can we fix that? Now if we have a brief look at this bit of code that creates our particle with all those rays coming out, you can see where the problem is. And it's this part here, that for every ray, we're passing all the walls. And it's iterating through every single wall before deciding whether it's found the best intersection. So what we can do to improve this is alter our update method to pass an ordered set of walls. And what we can do is order our walls using an ordered walls function. What it's going to do is figure out the distance, the shortest distance to each wall just depending on the end point. That is going to create an error later but we can solve that as well. We always select for the shortest distance and then we order our walls using sorted and zip dependent on this set of distances where the indexes align for each wall and we just return that list and that allows us to basically say to any of the rays the first intersection you find will be from the closest wall so don't carry on calculating it will dramatically lessen the number of calculations per ray so let's see this implementation um... I broke something okay so a brief pause fixed it and I'm back but you can see it's not working quite how we want it to there's a discrepancy between which walls it considers closest and that's because the walls share corners so if there's a corner point where a wall the wrong wall is selected it will allow the ray to travel all the way through to intersect with only that wall i just wanted to check if a greater number of rays would be able to cope fine too because the computer wasn't struggling at all and sure enough many more rays i think this was about 3000 it was completely fine so this strategy is working Right, well I did a quick fix and it basically just involved grouping the walls so that if they had the same shortest distance you had to find the best intersection distance with that small group. And now it's running smooth as butter. Absolutely beautiful. For the next modification I wanted to change the field of view and enable you to be able to rotate and walk around the maze. This was quite a straightforward implementation using Pygame where using the up and down arrows allowed you to go forward or reverse and the left and right arrows I just added direction parameter in the particle class. That was used to update the ray direction as well. So we're able to really easily rotate and change the direction of the field of view. We've got this really nice little setup which we're now going to have a look at how we can render what we're seeing to give us that three-dimensional view. Now rendering an image from the information we have is actually pretty easy. What we do is we have all these rays shooting out and they have a distance associated with them and we can change 
a set of slices in a rectangular frame in our view based on those rays. The distance can alter the height and the colour of each of these little slices. And that will give us the feeling of a three-dimensional shape. So let's see what that looks like when we just take the distance value from each ray calculation and use it to render an image. Now I have to say this looks really cool. It's so fun to be able to see the maze that we're walking through rendered on that right hand screen. And you can see where the height of the rectangles is selected based on the distance. We have a bit of a fisheye effect, that sort of curving that occurs as you get closer to a wall. But I quite like it in this setup. And I also think this video is getting a bit long. So we're not gonna handle that right now, but it is something we can have a look at later. Anyway, to turn this into a proper back rooms game, we're gonna need to have a bit of a color change. And there we go, beautiful set of vile yellow colors associated with the back rooms games. I hope you've enjoyed this project. You can see how nice and easy it is to walk around and that you do get sort of this fun sense of depth as you start to move. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a like, uh, maybe drop a comment, and you know, you can always subscribe. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.